Well, not to be disingenuous, but today's Wednesday walkabout where I'm gonna just show what is going on, what's coming out and what's going in is actually being shot on Sunday because I've got some things I need to do on Wednesday and shooting a Wednesday walkabout won't fit in. So we're actually doing this on Sunday. I just went to Bricks and I got a bunch of this gorgeous Joseph's coat. You talk about a plant that can take the heat. It also comes in purple. I really like this, uh, this golden color. And anyhow, this is gonna be great to fill in a few holes that I've got in a number of different places. So Stuart, if you wanna come out here to my very raggedy front yard right now. And I'm just gonna talk about some of the things that I'm, I'm going to be doing because this week it's all about reestablishing good form to the garden because everything has gotten very wild and overgrown. And I really liked that wild look when things were still in bloom and it looked kind of meadowy with the foxglove and the larkspur and the Minoan lace. And now we have some fever few that's joined the party. But most of the stuff has started to set seed and I will leave some select plants for them to go to seed so I can save the seed for to scatter about and for next season. But I'm not gonna leave all of it because some of it is starting to show evidence of spider mite. I wanna cut it back. Um, it's been, up until this weekend, it's been very, very inordinately hot and windy. So we've got a cool spell and I'm gonna be just rabid in going through and clearing out a bunch of stuff kind of like I'm pulling out all the remains. There's still a few in here of the pansies. Now you say, why not just leave them in there? They've still got a few pretty blooms because in very short order, they're gonna be done and all they will do is die back and just attract sow bugs and things like that. Plus I wanna get more air circulation through here. And because of that, I am starting to really clear out this whole area in here. This was just filled with foxglove largely and, and columbine, and it was starting to show evidence of spider mite and some other critters. So I have sprayed this really well with insecticidal soap earlier in the morning when it wasn't real hot um, or windy and the sun wasn't blaring down. But I'm gonna tidy this all up and then the soil a little bit, and this is where I'm gonna put some of that chartreuse Joseph's coat is in this area in here. The other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm I'm going to gently prune my boxwood because they've gotten very overgrown and I want to re-establish the good circular form to those. I, in last Sunday's, uh, which hopefully you watched on Sunday, in last Sunday's episode, I talked about three fast and easy garden projects. And if you guys didn't watch that one, you need to go back. It was one of Stuart's favorite ones that we have done in a while, probably because I was doing all of the work and he was just standing there enjoying it. But I had a really overgrown, I won't even tell you what it was, but a really overgrown shrub in there. You can see where I have dug it out. All of that needs to be cleaned out and stuff just needs to be cut back and tidied up. And I'm gonna do that with this whole area. I'm gonna deadhead these roses. Um, all of this will take oh some- Oh they lost their pink. I know, they lost their pink hue. Away. This is what happens when it's very, very hot and windy. Anything that comes into bloom, it just doesn't hold its bloom very long. So while this can handle this hot and dry aspect, and if you haven't watched that video, <laughs> go back and watch and watch it. It does beautifully here in terms of surviving, but it's, when it's really hot and windy, any blooming plant, I don't care, I don't care what it is and how much it loves the sun, the blooms are just gonna, they're just gonna fade faster and not last as long as they would if, if the, the uh, weather was a little bit more beneficent. So that's, that's kind of that. You can see that the Shasta daisies are starting to come up. I still have mounds of creeping flocks to cut back. All of that will get, this will just get a good grooming. We need to have a good spa day, a good spa day for the garden 
where it gets its hair cut, it gets its nails trimmed, it gets every, everything done. And that is what is coming up next. And then it will be largely just green on green with the exception of the daisies and a few other things that come into bloom. And of course, what I will have in the window box or um, in, in some of these other garden areas. But see how vibrant yes, that Joseph's coat, coat is? So even though it's not a blooming plant, it will give much great color to this area and also pick up the other yellow toned and chartreuse colors that I've got going in here. I wanna see the purple. You wanna see the purple? It grows, a little, it grows a little bit taller. I kind of debated um, between the two, but this is what I this is what I decided on. Um, that whole secret garden area back there, you can see all of the foxglove are pretty much spent, and that is most of the seed where I most of the plants where I will let it go to seed. So things are overgrown. I'll probably still be digging out some more things. I'll come back in and top dress what exposed. Uh, soil there is I'll come back in and top dress this from mulch now it looks with mulch it looks very untidy from this vantage point but from the street it still looks great oh case in point this is what I wanted to show you so for example see how rangy overgrown and messy this white yarrow looks from this side this all came from my sister this is a native and it came from my sister who has a lake house up near lake tenkeller so from this aspect it looks really really bad but Stuart, if we come around this way i mean it already looks better as we get even just slightly over if you're looking at a street view it still looks beautiful doesn't it well, yeah, it's like the tree back there and the box was you had to move after the... Right. So, yeah, it just, it looks like it's been crushed, actually, and it's kind of been crushed, a lot it's of that's wind damage. But from this side, it's just absolutely beautiful. So I've been hesita hesitant to go ahead and cut it back. The other reason is because it's a pollinator magnet. But pretty soon, I know those flower heads, if I don't cut them now, they're just going to get increasingly brown and kind of die. So I think what I'm going to do is when we finish up here, Stuart, I'm gonna cut a huge, I'm just gonna cut it all back and make a huge, beautiful bouquet of it and bring it inside. It feels so good, the wind. The it's wind, so I nice know, it's just so there. nice. Stuart and I are just, <laughs> we are reveling in it. So nice. um, ooh, I just about got hit by a bird. So that leads me to my question of the day, and that is what do you have in your own gardens right now to cut back that will make you feel so good once you do it? Um, even though this is beautiful, once I cut it back and it's a lot tidier and doesn't look so messy, it will give me just great satisfaction being able to cut it back and, th and when it comes back out again, it will come out with new growth and it will be really, really beautiful. I think we have a sightseer, Stuart, somebody dri driving by. Um, okay, so we will let them continue to look at the front, but let's go to the back and I'll show you what's going on there. Well, I was gonna to go to the back, but then I had to show you today's current frustration because I cut back all of the sweet alyssum in here and this was getting kind of buggy. I wanted to have a lot more air circulation in here and I wanted room for the plumbago to grow out. But look, look, all of this, I didn't do any of this. Guess who did? Ooh, some up there too. Guess who did? Look here, Stuart. I saw that first, I'm going down here now. Yeah, yeah. No, this is all compliments of my friends, the squirrels. Those dastardly, dastardly squirrels. So once again, I'm gonna to have to come back here and clean this up, put some of my little stakes with mentholatum on it. And I also got some of this gorgeous, I just love this stuff. This is grown by Red Dirt, Red Dirt Plants here in Oklahoma. And it is a beautiful silver brocade it's artemisia. Like sage or something. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's just gorgeous and I love the color. So I'm gonna put some of that in here and hopefully it will cover enough surface area that maybe the squirrels will be deterred well, along with some other measures. Okay, now let's go to the back. Lots going on this beautiful Sunday. Now I have to say, look at that. Isn't that beautiful, Stuart? 
So sometimes, not all the time, but typically when the hydrangeas are in bloom, it it's good. pretty gasp inducing. Yeah, and some, some people came over last week and the light was just perfect. And I had just pruned the boxwoods and I think they, I do think they gasped a little bit because it really did look nice. Doesn't always look like that, yes. but sometimes it does. Yeah, it does. Um, I'm gonna have to reposition on my, on my back porch I'm going to have to, you can see I've got my neem oil and stuff because some of that's going to get used. But I've got most of my myrtle topiaries on the porch and it's getting to the point now where they're not getting enough sun. So I'm going to have to do some kind of, uh, where I'm going to have to move some of these around. And some of them are just going to have to get a vacation in a little bit more sun because I want them to put on growth and I'll give them a really good feed. So they are in waiting for me to do that. They still look very pretty right now, but um, they, are, they are telling me they want a little bit more sun. Now this is kind of chaotic and kind of messy looking because Stuart and I just finished shooting the segment we put up on Sunday. Again, by all means, you guys need to check it out. Stuart was having a lot of fun watching me work Weren't you, Stuart? I always I had to. I had to <laughs> chide him because I was doing all of the work and he was doing all of the grunting because he was he was vicariously he was vicariously gardening hold, by, through hold me. Hold your arms in front of your face for 30 minutes. And huh? see I know. That's true. <laughs> I, that's true. I never give Stuart enough credit. So many of you are good about it because yeah, he, we shoot all of this in one continuous stream 99% of the time. So his little hands are always there being steady, shooting, sometimes being bitten by mosquitoes, sometimes having gnats fly around him. And he's always, he's just always so calm, it's so the, cool. It's the best life. So, so collected. We have fun though. Um, I'm already thinking that my window box is almost too successful and some of those hostas that weren't doing anything in the front and I stole from Peter to pay Paul, I planted them in here. Now I realize how large they actually get. So they may have to be transplanted into some different pots before they completely shade out everything. But look at how gorgeous this looks with this fern, which came back from last year, and this gorgeous hucarella. I really, really, I really do love it, but it's getting too congested, I realize. Okay, here is, here is the plant everybody wants and everybody talks about. These are the terra hydrangeas. And I did talk to the Southern Living Rep last week, and she is going to find out where we can maybe source some one of the followers commented and said they knew a place in Texas that, that had them. So who, just getting started. Just and they are just getting started. Yeah. And remember the first time we shot this, Stuart, there was just one mm -hmm. bud. These are now three years old. And not only has the, the, the size of the plant increased dramatically, but the number of blooms also has as well. This whole area is really filling out is really filling out very, very nicely. So yesterday, or, or I say yesterday, the previous video that we did, I talked about doing some more thrifting from your garden, shopping your garden. And I dug up another one of these darling junipers. So I've got two of them here. Stuart, can you see that yeah. well enough? Because there's always so many things. No, that, the way you have it's perfect. Okay. So there is number one, and I've got a, a, a faux bois theme going right here. Here is number two that maybe, did we shoot this one, me digging up this one? But I've got another one we dug up, uh, we dug up today, and it also is gonna go in a faux bois container. So then I will have a trio. I like things in threes, and I'll have a trio come Christmas time and I have all of my tiny pine cones to mulch these with, and it's gonna be, it's just gonna be so, so gratifying and so fun. Um, chaos, 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 because we've got <laughs> lots of projects. But look here, this was something that I did that I'm so happy that I did. I used to have all hydrangea in here that bloomed on old wood and I dug up which ones I knew 
bloomed on old wood and replaced them. These are Southern Living varieties. I believe this is Dolores. Um, that Dolores or Big Daddy blooms on new wood. And look at, I'm getting big buds, lots of buds on them. So it didn't care that we had that hard freeze. Oh, I've got to watch where I'm stepping. So. Yeah, watch where you're stepping, Stuart. I don't want to kill the plants. Yeah, but look in here. Even these are starting to get buds on them. And I'm going to prune this tree just a little bit to get a little bit more light down in here. Lots of buds there. Lots of buds on the Annabelle. So these are all just getting started as all of, of these oak leaf hydrangeas are just putting on growth and probably depending on the weather are just short of peak and Stuart one of the things you asked me to remind you about was taking some stills of this afterwards so we can really demonstrate over time what they look like as as they age and again yeah they'll be way fuller right yeah, they'll be more full. They will begin to subtly change color. I've got a little wayward plant here, Stuart. I need to I need to remedy. Um, I like the conveniently placed. Yeah, conveniently placed. You can see this is my con. Larkspur. No, Larkspur. Larkspur. Yes, and it's lasted for a while. It planted itself in a rather inconvenient that's, spot. That's but like. do you think, am I going <laughs> to dig it up? No. No, I practically never sit down anyway. Um, and when we do, we don't typically sit there anymore. This used to be the bench. I'm sure I've shared you with this with you, Stuart. This used to be the bench that my husband and I sat on when the kids, my two boys, would do their Power Ranger moves and, you know, <laughs> look at me, look at me, Mom, look at me, Dad. They would do all of that stuff out here in in the garden on the grass and we would sit here and we would be their audience but we now we we're just in other areas of the garden if you will show across the top when i talk about things that get overly aggressive this it's all that virginia creeper you can see the wisteria and by the way you know i talk about this coming from my neighbor's house but it you know the people that live there now, they didn't plant this stuff. The people that live behind me, they didn't plant the Virginia creeper. They inherited it. It's just as obnoxious to them as it is as it is to me uh, because they inherited it. Now that said, the neighbors that used to be over there, they did plant that wisteria. And, um, and since they don't live there anymore, I can say they weren't very nice neighbors. <laughs> so... So at any rate, now we have lovely neighbors and we mutually are combating all of this overgrown stuff. Okay, so more, there's a little bit more color coming out and a lot of the geraniums were kind of beaten up by the wind. I've got lots of deadheading to do and I'm gonna do that and then I'm getting ready to feed all of these geraniums again because they should be really, really beautiful in this cooler weather. So I'm getting ready to do all of that. And um, I'm getting, I did a lot more pruning and shaping on the two boxwood by that these were, as you may recall, you guys, these were two boxwood balls that I transplanted from the front of the potage and I, I transplanted them in here because in the Arctic blast what was in here was lost and I'm slowly getting them into perfectly round balls and I'm I am happy about that I'm going to give them a good feed and this also reminds me that upcoming in the next week or so I'm going to do some uh, another garden design episode on something called framing the view and this reminds me to tell you about that uh, the other thing i wanted to remember to tell you about is coming up pretty soon and we will post it we're going to be doing our first members only live youtube the advantage of that is if you are a member of my channel not just a subscriber but a member and to become a member you just where it says in the little intro at the front, it says join. Anywhere it says join. Yeah. Anywhere it says join or member at the top on my, my YouTube page, that's how you can become a member. And uh, that bumps up your questions to the top. Well, essentially it just, 
it limits the, the amount of, there'll be less people there'll in be there. Less people. You'll be more likely to get questions answered. Yeah, instead of, of 3,000, there'll, yeah. there'll, be, there'll be a much smaller, smaller population group, and, yeah. and you'll have a much better opportunity for us to visit and for me specifically to answer your questions. And we're also hoping to do some of those as, as a fundraiser for some charities that are near and dear to Stewart's. And those Stewart's. will probably be public ones. For, and for those that, will probably yeah. be public ones, but that's to that's to come. Them. But we've had so much fun doing those mm -hmm. that we want to do more of them. I hope you guys enjoy them too. Uh, Stuart, what else is going on back here? Just lots of stuff needs to be still needs to be cut back. My viburnum's green. Your viburnum is, yes, it's now green. And show, show how massive the cascade oh, wow. of those, those oak leaf hydrangeas are here. And also, this is that ditzia that I cut back really, really hard, and it is starting to put out new growth. And the oak leaf hydrangea behind it looks so pretty, I don't even care that this woodiness <laughs> is exposed because I know that pretty soon it's going to be happy and just fine again. This Veronica is starting to, to, uh, to bloom. This is such a tough plant, Veronica is, and it, I love the lavender color of it. It goes to seed pretty readily and I let it pretty much go wherever it wants. There is some here. It's just beautiful. It's a little bit too high noon for too many pollinators to be out, but it's a pollinator magnet. All of this is that beautiful Veronica. Here is a white chrysanthemum. I'm going to let it bloom its first time, and then I will cut it back hard and feed it and encourage it to bloom again in the fall. Oh, here's my, here's my third little guy, Stuart. Yep. I need to mulch it. Here is my third my third little blue point juniper in a faux bois pot. I think it's really, really cute. It's just cool they show up all over the yard. They just, yeah, they do. They just show up like this one. So this one, I said this in a previous video, that one started out just like this. And you could see it's got the starting of this form because it's got a strong central stem and I could easily turn that into a ball. That's a really good example. Yep, yeah, that's, that's a pretty good example. This barberry needs to be cut back. Um, and so, so many projects going on here in the potage because now it's getting hot enough for me to transition out the cool season stuff. I've pulled out all of the lettuce and most of the greens. And um, now I'll be putting in basil, tomatoes, peppers. Uh, if you didn't watch my pepper video, watch my pepper video because I, I so appreciate and read the comments because I so, so appreciate all the different kinds of peppers I didn't know about that you guys shared with me from Cuba and around and around the world. And then I will end on this note because we've got some projects in the work, but I will end on this note that I just love this blue gray color. I'm coming your way. You're coming my way. I'm doing cinematic stuff. The Larkspur has really <laughs> held on this year. All right. That was fun. Yeah. Okay. And so I'm loving this blue gray color that's in here from this Rudbeck Rudbeckia maxima which used to be in a different place and I transplanted it here where it is very happy. There's another large clump at the other end. And I love the color of that leaf. I love the way it looks with the color of the iris that have spent blooms, but nevertheless, the foliage makes a good contrast and is beautiful with it. Kind of matches the bottom of that. I know, it, it really does. And then I've got, there's um, Sedum Autumn Joy, but then even, even the kale, I forgot I seeded some kale there and it's in that same color too. So I could do a beautiful flower arrangement just with the foliage foliage of all of all of these guys um, so this this is just like I say all a work all a work in progress oh but wouldn't it be when I do that flower arrangement Stuart wouldn't it be beautiful to also have the dill. as a textural counterpoint have some of this dill in there isn't that beautiful Lacy. Yeah, let's do a little, let's do a quick little tussy messy here. We haven't done one of those in a while. We haven't done one of those in a while. Do what, does our audience even know what a tussy messy is? A tussy messy is, is a tussy messy is a, uh, a little handheld bouquet 
that you can use for design purposes to see what looks together looks good together so you can use it for design I talk about it in my book but you also know know if it looks good together in your hand it will also look good together in a vase so you can see those three that was one of the first things even I learned four look at see look how pretty all of that looks together I think you did a Tussie Mussie the first shoot we did. One of the very first shoots we did, we did a Tussie Mussie. So we will end on that note. Go out into your garden and make a Tussie Mussie and, and maybe do a random act of Tussie Mussie and surprise someone with a Tussie Mussie that might appreciate it. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this Wednesday walk around on a Sunday. You guys have a great day. Well, if you've held on this long, this is the same outfit that I had in Sunday's video, and that is my Armani Exchange sunglasses, my top, which is Universal Thread that came thrifted, and I can't remember where that's where, where that line is from. Uh, my britches are J. Crew Matchstick; they're only three-quarter length, and my Hunter boots are off of eBay. Oh, and never, never forget my earrings, Stuart. My earrings are some of my favorite turquoise earrings, and I got these at TJ Maxx. So there you go. There's your outfit of the day.